All right, boys and girls, this is Math Message 3-7, and in this math message, we're going to be able to represent data on a bar graph and be able to choose the correct scale. Now, actually, this is one of our exploration days, so if we were doing this lesson at school, we also have other explorations to do, like finding area and um, sorting some shape blocks and things like that. But because you might not have all of the right tools at home, we're just going to make this simple today, and we're just going to look at the bar graphs and looking at the scale. All right, let's go ahead and get our math brains warmed up. I'm going to back up here to a warm up real quick. And let's go ahead and get our math brains warmed up. I'm going to show you three problems, and I want you to choose the problem that has a difference of about 100. So look at these problems, pause the video. Okay, when I look at this first problem, I know that this is about 100 minus 50 if I round these numbers. And so 100 minus 50 is 50, so that's not about 100. This one's going to be um, um, less than 100. It's honestly not going to be too far off from 100, um, but I don't know, I guess it, it's going to be pretty close to 100, because when you think about it, let's do this. 120, if I round this to 120 minus 50, all right, let's think about this. If I take 50 off of 120, if I subtract 20, that's 100, and then I would have to subtract 30 more, so that gets me a little bit closer to 70. So I guess, um, you know, a difference of about 100, it's close to 100. But let's see if we have a problem that's even closer to 100. All right, so let's look at the next one. 362 minus 258. I'm going to change 362 into, let's say, 360. And let's turn 300, or 258 into 260. Okay, because 62 is close to 60, 58 is close to 60. Now, boys and girls, now we're getting even closer to 100, aren't we? If we subtract those 60s off, 300 minus 200 would give me 100. So this one here is really close to 100. And then when I look at 329 minus 111, let's see here. I'm going to change this 329 to about 330 and change this 111 to about, about 110. Those are easy numbers, right? When I do 30 minus 10, that's 20, and 300 minus 100, so that's going to be about 220. So that's well over 100. All right, let's do another set. I'm going to show you three problems. I want you to tell me which has a difference of less than 200. Pause the video and give yourself time to think. All right, when I do this one, I'm going to change 598 is super close to 600. Minus 105 is close to 100. When I do the subtraction there, I have a difference of 500. So this one is definitely not less than 200. All right, when I come over here, 382, let's change this one to 380. Minus 113 is close to 110. All right, so when I subtract my hundreds here, 300 minus 100 is 200. And then 80 minus 10 is 70. This one is up well above 200. So that is not less than 200. And then the last one, 899 is super close to 900. 782, that's really close to um, 800. And when I subtract those two numbers, I actually have 100. So definitely that is has a difference of less than 200. All right, so now that we have our math brains warmed up, let's get back to our actual math message. For this, you are going to need to turn in your workbooks to page 78. So if you need to pause the video so that you can get to page 78 that looks like this, go ahead. All right, now let's look at this problem. It says that Jasmine kept a record of the number of minutes she did homework each school day. So you can see that she drew out this table here. She has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and she has her data for how many minutes she did homework each day. Now, she wants to use the bar graph below to show her data. 
So I want you to think about how Jasmine could set up her graph and what scale could she use for her number of minutes. Now guys, we talked about what the scale means. That scale is the numbers over to the side here the scale is what am I counting by? Am I counting by ones? Am I counting by twos, by fives, by tens, by twenties, by fifties? You could really count by just about anything. That is my scale. So when I look at this bar graph, everything has already been set up for Jasmine. She's got her time spent on homework is her title up here. So that's what our graph is about. Down here we have our categories already filled in for the days of the week. And we know that over here is going to be our number of minutes. So we have to set up our scale. Now guys, when I look at this bar graph, it's not a very big or tall graph. Look how many boxes I have. I only have one, two, three, four, five boxes. Okay? So if I were to count by ones, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I would only be able to make a bar that goes up to five. Well, look at my data. My data is much bigger than that. So boys and girls, when you're trying to decide what your scale should be, you need to look at your data and look at the biggest number you need to represent. My biggest number is 45. So I know that I need to count by a number that's going to be able to allow me to get up to 45. So Pause the video, give yourself time to think, what would you count by? And boys and girls, to make life easy, I would count by tens. If I count by tens, remember guys, you always, always, always have to, have to start with zero down here. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 goes clear up at the top. Now I can fit in all of my data. So on Monday, if she read for 45 minutes, I need to shade in up to 45. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and then I need to go halfway between 40 and 50. That's going to get me up to my 45. Now guys, I like to make sure that the top of my bar is nice and crisp and clear so that I can tell how tall my bar goes. And then if it gets sloppier down through here, that's okay. But I don't like to see this because then I can't really tell how tall the bar should be. All right? So now, on Tuesday, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to fill in the bar graph for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay, I went ahead and finished shading in my bar graph. And so Tuesday needed to go to 20, so look how I made my bar nice and crisp up at the 20. So I need to shade in two of these blocks. Um, Wednesday, she um, did homework for 35 minutes, so I needed to make my nice crisp line go between 30 and 40, so I'm shading in half of this block and then shading in all the rest of the others. Um, for Thursday, she read for 40 minutes, so I have a nice crisp line up here at 40. And now let's look at Friday. I didn't feel Friday in yet because I wanted to talk about that one a little bit. For Friday, she did homework for 17 minutes. Now, I know that this would be 10. Now I have to shade in seven more. Now half of this block would be five. So I want to make sure that I'm shading a little bit more than half. I need to be able to represent 17 as close as possible. And I know that halfway would be 15, so I want to make my bar go up a little bit higher than halfway. So I'm going to have my bar go right up to about there. And that would be a pretty good representation of 17. All right, so now here's the next thing that we're going to do. Just look on over to the next page there in your, whoops, in your workbook. Now, if you were in class, boys and girls, I would have you dig into a big old bucket of shape blocks, and you would then sort these shape blocks by triangles, wide rhombuses, narrow rhombuses, hexagons, trapezoids, and you would count those blocks and fill in the data. But because you don't have that at home, um, I just went ahead and filled in some pretend numbers here. So go ahead, pause the video, and fill in the data to match mine. All right, now we're going to do the same thing we did with the bar graph over to the left. 
everything is already filled out on this bar graph. I have the title. This bar graph is going to be about my pattern block sort. My categories are already down below with my triangle, wide rhombus, narrow rhombus, hexagon, and trapezoid. And now I have to fill in my scale. Now, what did I say you need to look for before you decide on your scale? You need to look at your data, right? Let's look at our data. What is the biggest number I need to represent? I need to be able to represent 14. All right, so now when I look at my bar graph, let's see how much space I have to work with here. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I definitely can't count by ones because then my bar will only go up to 7, and I need it to get up to 14. Now with the last bar graph, we counted by tens. So what would happen if we counted by tens? 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on. Well, take a look at what's going to happen. My biggest number that I need to represent is 14. So my biggest bar would only go to about right here. And then my smallest bar would be 5, and so my smallest bar would be down here, and that's not exactly in the right place. It would need to be in the hexagons, but you get the picture. My bars are going to be really teeny tiny. All of them are. And that's really not going to be a very good bar graph. So counting by tens is going to be counting in too big of steps. So I like to count in as small of steps as possible to still be able to fit my data. Remember, I have seven blocks here, and I need to get to 14. So think about that for a second. Does anything ring a bell with you? You have seven blocks and you need to get to 14. What if we counted by, how about twos? So let's start out with twos. So down here, remember, we always start with zero. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. That's going to get me my highest bar is going to go all the way to the tippy top and then my other bars will just kind of fall in line there. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. I think you are pretty good at filling in bar graphs, so I'm going to go ahead and let you um, take charge of that. But the biggest and most important thing you need to take away from this lesson is being able to choose a scale that fits your data the best. All right, that is it for Lesson 3-7.